Okay. Hello. Um, my name is Wei Min, and uh, welcome to my presentation of my paper, Acoustic Scene Analysis uh, with a Multi-Head Attention Networks. Acoustic Scene Classification. So the definite, the Acoustic Scene Classification is a challenging task because a single scene may have multiple sound patterns, for example, like silverware, clinking, frying, and so on. At the same time, multiple scenes may have overlapping same patterns. For example, both cooking and dishwashing could have the same silver, silverware clinking sound. And um, in addition, we have class labels that are usually at high level, which is event level only. So for, each, for instance, for each utterances, we have one a label for the overall sound event, cooking event and there's no frame level sub event labels that's provided on a frame by frame basis. So the data set we'll be using um, in this paper is uh, task five of DK's 2018 challenge. So in total we have nine classes and each classes have utterances ranging from 900 to 18,000 training samples. So the distribution is quite um, and even if you look at the distribution on the right side of the table. So, and for acoustic channels for each utterances, uh, it has four and the sampling rate of 16K. All right. So the multi-head attention network we propose in this paper is using um, a deep neural net to extract features from raw audios in mouse spectrograph. Basically it's a 64 dimension log mouse features. And each head, after that, each head of the multi-head attention represents a certain hidden sub-events, which are learnable. And each head tends to frames that are most relevant to that particular event uh, based on dot product, which you'll see later on. And the features from all heads are then pulled together, which will then be passed to a fully connected layer. So the overall architecture looks like this. And uh, we start with the um, mouse spectrogram input, which is the one on the top, you can see. And, oh, it's, I think it's blocking the paper. So let me just, um, okay. All right. So we start with the mouse spectrogram um, that has a dimension of 64 times 1,250. And then we uh, feed this um, data as an image to a confidence layer, which is a 2D confidence layer similar to our um, VGG-ish architecture. Um, after the conf layer, we'll be getting the dimension of the tensor, which is two times 156 times 512. So the two is actually the uh, originally 64 y-axis after multiple downsampling. And the 156 is from the 1250, which is the x axis after multiple downsampling, which is the time dimension. And the 512 is actually the channel of the image of the tensor. Then we feed this uh, 3D tensor to, uh, we flatten this tensor first so that we combine the first and the third axis, which is 2 and 512, into. 1D, which is um, 1024. So the final tensor will be a 2D tensor, which is 156 times 1024. Then we pass this tensor to a bi-directional LSTM, um, whose dimension is 160 because it's bi-direction, so the output will be 320. And the time dimension does not change, which is still 156. And eventually, you look at the equation on the left, the F is actually representing the uh, ComNAS plus a bidirectional RSTM uh, architecture. So the output will be H1 to HT, and each have the dimension of 320, which is uh, corresponding to the right diagram. And the T here is less or equal to the T prime, which is the original time frames uh, due to downsampling. And um, then we have the equation for the attention has. So for each attention has AI, uh, AT, um, we'll do um, like weighted um, 
operation for the uh, each of the frame. So basically, we have the vector v i here represent the uh, partic particular hidden events for attention i, and uh, that will be used to multiply by the uh, will be used to do a dot product, which is h t here, and then uh, scaled by the theta, which is uh, attention shapeness. And the smaller theta, the, the more bigness of the attention distribution. Then we follow by exponential operation and uh, divided by the sum of all the um, dot products. And eventually the attention has will be sum equals to one as all positive, all non-negative basically. And um, yes, so after that, we will be doing a weighted sum for each of the HT using the calculated attention has A here. So eventually for each attention has, we'll be getting uh, one fixed dimensional vector SI uh, that has the same uh, size of the original HT. And if we have M attention has, we have M SI. So eventually we concatenate all of them together and pass it to a two layer, the, uh, which is, uh, the last two layer on the right side of the diagram. So eventually uh, the final output will be a uh, dimension size of nine, which is a nine re representing nine classes uh, through a soft max operation. And yeah, the overall network will be optimized using a cross entropy loss uh, in end to end fashion. And uh, let's look at the um, architecture for the confidence part. So the confidence is similar to uh, VGG architecture. So it's like conf, conf, pool, conf, conf, pool, and so on. So for the kernel size, we use three by three and stride one by one. For the mass pooling, we use two by two. Yeah, so this is just um, detail of the layers of the confidence layer. So the training approach is as follows. So we treat each channel as in independent data sets for the training data set. So because each other has have four channels, so in total we augment the training data from 73,000 to 292,000. And during inferences, we'll average prediction for each channel um, for each data set. And the augmentation method, we use simply uh, randomly choose two utterances within the same class. Then we cut a five second continuous segment from each utterance. Then we concatenate them into a new 10 second utterances uh, as new training data. And we do this on the fly. And we only apply augmentation to minority classes. Uh, from the previous uh, table distribution of the classes, we see that the cooking, dishwashing, eating, other social activity, and vacuum cleaning are actually the minority classes. And we we'll only apply augmentation to these classes. And for one epoch, we define as follows. So we don't sample each class to the same number of data as in the smallest class. So the smallest class here is vacuum cleaning. So we will downsample each of the other classes to be the same number of, uh, to have the same number of utterances as the, this vacuum cleaning. Then we loop through each samples as one epoch. And optimizer, we use Adam with a batch size of 200 initial learning rate of 0 0.001 and reduced by 0 0.5 every seven epochs and measured on the depth set every five epochs and to macro F1 score never improve on the death set. So there are only two parameters to tune, hyperparameter tune in this model, which is uh, theta and M. Uh, like we discussed previously, theta is a, the attention shape. Uh, the smaller the theta, the sharper the attention distribution. M is the number of the attention hands. If you look at on the right side, we use a death set to tune the parameter for theta and M. We find out that um, the best theta is around 0 0.2, and the best of M uh, is nine, after which it would, not, uh, it would not help improve the accuracy anymore. So later on, we'll discuss that M actually happens to be coincidentally the same as the total number of classes in this data set, which is also nine. So the experiment's results. So we compare our um, models results to the previous winner of DK's 2018, as well as baseline, baseline and also our same architecture except we replace the uh, attention pooling with max pooling. 
So we see that on the right side of the table, uh, our results get uh, better than all three overall, um, especially much better than baseline as well as a mass pooling version. And um, yeah, and also it's on par with the previous winner solution. So next we'll look at some of the visualizations that we have um, after training on the depth data set. So basically, um, we are visualizing, we're using TSNE to visualize the HT here. If you still remember the HT actually is a, is a vect, feature vector after the conf nets and the bi-directional errors here for each um, time step. So from one to T and T here is 156, which is reduced from the original uh, like T prime, which is much larger. So let's look at this uh, TSNE plot. So on the left side, we see that um, um, the, okay, the both plots are using exactly the same data points, but different coloring. So on the left side, we color the points using the attention has. So basically we find out for each HT, we find out the um, attention has that maximize uh, the a AIT basically. So um, if the if the um, attention if this HT maximize attention has one, then we we'll, will color it as attention one, and so on. And on the right side, we use the color for uh, the actual label for the class. So if this dot uh, is from an uh, alternates that has a label of dishwashing, we'll use the dishwashing color for that dot. Yeah. And uh, from this distribution, we can see clearly that there are some uh, correspondence between the distribution of the attention has as well as the coloring. So specifically, we can see that, um, uh, for example, that um, on the left side, the green areas is represented by attention has three. And on the right side, this is mainly for um, watching TV, yeah. Uh, in fact, let's listen to some of the um, utterances. So basically, for each of the HT here, we extrapolate back to, uh, to the original 10 seconds uh, audio so that we can find out the one second segment from uh, the original 10 second audio that's corresponding to that particular HT. And then we crop that one second segment out and listen to the audio. So this is, for example, attention had three uh, for watching TV. No, Mike, you think of it. You're fine. So then, Yeah, so as you can um, hear that all of them are actually um, the, the watching TV segment from the original 10 seconds utterances that uh, maximize the uh, tension three uh, for those utterances. And uh, let's go to the next one. So this one is actually corresponding to attention had, uh, I think it's five or six, the, because the color is not very clear. And on the right side, it is uh, watching TV again. Yes, so basically this is a scenario where one particular classes have multiple um, sub events or multiple attention heads, right, representations. So let's listen to this attention heads. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, if you look carefully on the right side, you see that this area is actually uh, covering two events. The majority is from watching TV and the other is from social activity. So based on the listening um, exercise we did just now, that we see that this one second seems to be have, uh, from a distribution of the watching TV as well as human talking uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, watching TV is also human talking, but uh, social activity means like the the real like human presence when they talk, not just from the TV itself. Yeah, let's look at the other one. So yeah, so this cluster is also interesting because this is from one attention head, which is attention head nine, but comprises of three kind of events. So basically like cooking, dishwashing, 
as well as some of the social activity. So this means that this attention has is shared by multiple classes. Let's listen to some of them. Okay, so from these segments that it seems to like they are from like, um, like activity you're doing when you're doing cooking and dishwashing, uh, even though we don't hear any uh, social activities, but um, in general, that's, this is quite uh, representative sound events that um, are pointing to certain activities or like uh, certain like sub events. So the fin finally, we'll be looking at um, some like uh, uh, visualizations on the mouse background point of view. So basically we have nine attention heads as we defined previously, and each row is represent one attention head. And uh, each clip, uh, each segment is actually one second uh, mouse background cropped from the original 10 seconds R transfers. So like we see previously that attention three and five are actually from watching TV. So you can see that um, and in watching TV as well as social activity. So they look like a um, speech mouse spectrogram. And the uh, attention has nine, for example, is from like sudden hitting sound or uh, like loading sound. So that's why it's, there's a sharp um, pigness uh, in the middle. Yeah. And there are some other uh, like kind of toss that you can see that was discovered by different other attention has. So, yeah, so we just look at the three and five, which are from watching TV, as well as uh, nine, which is cooking, dishing, dishwashing, and the social activity. Yeah. So, in conclusion, that we have discussed a multi head attention network based, a based network for acoustic scene classification. And the network has achieved AMPA performances with a previous winner. And what's more, it uncovers some meaningful hidden sound events, uh, which is done, which is done in the unsupervised training fashion, without um, labels for on the frame level, and the whole network is trainable in turn. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention um, to my presentation. Yeah, hope you like it. Thank you.